My name is Andrew Pick. I'm an Anglo-Indian of English and Indian heritage. And I was born in Bangalore and I grew up there. I was baptized as a Catholic and everything that I have in my life, the important occasions, past Holy Communion, marriage, baptism of my children, have all been in this church. And I had this encounter with Jesus very shortly after I migrated to New Zealand. It was an act of God. It was not an act of man. And my journey that began a long time ago and journeys, a journey that began with crises in my life. The first time was in 1965, when I was around 15. Dad had had cancer for three years, beginning in 62. Towards the end of 65 in October, they told my mom that my dad was going to die my mom and dad were Catholics and had eight children. Dad was the only earning member. And my mom was terrified that if we lost dad, we would be in a mega mess. My mom didn't go to her family. She took me to church and she prayed there I, with her. And what happened was in that one night of prayer, every single cancer cell disappeared from my, body, from my dad's body. And my dad lived for 31 years after that. Much to the amazement of the doctors who challenged by my mom, in fact, in fact badgered by her, uh, operated because it was her belief that Jesus had healed my dad and they said look he's going to die because surgery is no option or she said you said he's dying and, and so what's the big deal if he dies today or he dies a few days later and so they made her sign a lot of documents indemnifying them from every claim or responsibility and they operated my dad and they couldn't find any cancer they did show us the x-rays that showed clusters of cancerous cells but when they opened up dad there was nothing so this was my introduction to the supernatural and the miraculous working of Jesus. And in the year 2000, on the 12th of February, my wife, her name is Linda, went to work hale and hearty at a quarter to four in the morning. She was working at the airport with the Qantas first class lounge. She liked her job. And she finished her shift at 11.30 and then she found something wrong. She couldn't get up from where she had sat for a small break. The paramedics were there. She had attention immediately, but they decided she was in the midst of a stroke. They moved her to a hospital closest to the airport. And the general manager called and told me about that. And I went there and I was absolutely shocked. My wife, who was absolutely well in the morning, was totally paralyzed on her right side. And investigations with scans and other things just brought me to a family meeting with the doctors the next morning. I was there and there were three doctors across from me. And what they told me was devastating. They said the bleeding, it was caused by a rupture in the thalamus or stem area of her brain. A blood vessel had ruptured. 
And they said the bleeding had continued. And they told me that she would go into a coma very shortly. Our meeting was at 8 in the morning uh, for Sunday. And they said, you better go and talk to her because this is the only chance you would have. Because the damage is so extensive to the left side of her brain, she's lost many vital functions, including the ability to swallow. And they told me if she lived, she would be a vegetable, unable to do anything for herself. And they said, even to drink water, we'd have to drip feed her. And they said, that's not the quality of life you want for anybody. I agreed. I said, sure. So I asked the doctors, are you saying you can't do anything for her? And they said, yes, that's right. That's exactly what we are telling you. Now, I knew about my dad, whom I told you about a little earlier. And I knew that he's a god of miracle working power. And so I told them I'll go to God. The doctors thought I was traumatized. But I, one doctor in, inadvertently laughed. And I said, that's OK. She felt bad. But I didn't t want to tell them the story. I wanted to rush to Jesus. And I went down. Linda was on the eighth floor in critical care. I went down, asked the reception, is there a cha chapel here? They said, no, there's a co common prayer room. And I went there. And I just sat down to pray. And I had an encounter with Jesus, just a few moments. Instantly, I heard a voice reassure me that Linda will be well. I said, thank you, Lord. I heard the same voice me, ask me, will you give me your life? And I said, sure. Will you serve me? And I said, I don't know how. Because I had done my economics and I was into management, management training, etc. I didn't know too much about scripture. Yet basic fundamental understandings that all of us get of going to church every Sunday, hearing discourses perhaps at other events such as retreats. But that was what it was. That's what I had. And so when I heard this voice and I said yes, I, friend, I felt this great joy, this great elation. And I was struggling with my emotions because just I looked at my watch. It was about 40 minutes prior to that. I didn't know time had passed. I felt such joy, but I didn't want to go up to where my wife was in intensive care. My older children were there. My friends were there. And I didn't want to go with a big smiling face. So I prayed, Lord, give me a sense of balance here. I don't want to hurt anyone's feeling, but I have this joy. And I go up. Fortunately, I met another Christian brother who came up with me and I said, hey, come along because I want to pray for Linda. And we went up and I started praying. And what did I pray? There were no fancy words. There was nothing. I just opened up my heart to God to just say, thank, thank you, God. I'm so joyful that you said Linda's going to be well. And I received that. And as I said that, incredibly, my wife's face was crooked. She was paralyzed on the right, so her jaw was pulled to the left. It was like an unseen hand took her jaw, move it back. I said, wow. Her right eye, which was closed, opened up. Her speech, which was absolutely hammered, hampered, became clear. She was trying to respond to the doctor's queries as to, hey, what's going on? But we couldn't understand a word. She was, her words were unintelligible. But her speech became clear. 
Her right hand was like a dead bird's claw, just like this. And what happened was this little finger and thumb, the moment we began to pray, started to move with a speed I can't fathom, can't replicate. And my wife, Linda, speaking clearly said, I feel waves of fire going over me. That was the start. In three days, she got out of her bed 100% healed with all her body functions and whatever it is, absolutely good. She's the same now, 18 and a half years ago. Now this was my entry into the incredible world of the supernatural. I believe as a Christian that nothing is impossible to those who pray and fight. I believe that to be a Christian, and I say this with great love for the church, praise God, I thank God for our Catholic church, because we come in a direct line of accession from Peter and Paul, Philip and Timothy, the founders of the healing ministries, and so on. James, John, all of them, we come from them. And so I'm very proud. But I thank God that we are called to relationship. We are called to a relationship with God, our Father. He sent Jesus to die for you and me, simply for this purpose that we are reconciled to him. We got to know this. We have to know this. And being reconciled to him, there is favor upon you and me. And this favor is that relating to our father and calling him father and receiving the gift he gave you, you and me, priceless gift of Jesus who shed his blood, died for us on a cross, so that we will be set free. We are captives no longer. I refuse to believe that. To any devil, to any disease, we are not captive. I believe that through the power of Jesus and his blood, and the great gift that Jesus has given you and me, the Holy Spirit, we are an empowered body. The Bible tells me, the word declares to me that through grace, which is the unmerited favor of God on your life and mine, we are empowered, simply that. And what are we empowered to do? We are empowered to do the same things that Jesus did. For sure, we live 2,000 years later. We profess and proclaim a risen Christ. I say, what better way to demonstrate this than go out and in his name do the things that Jesus did. Paul tells us we are called to be imitators of Christ. As imitators, what do we do? We imitate Christ. We are told that we are heirs of Christ. We are inheritors. That's what we are called. Come on, brothers and sisters, why don't we simply start acting like heirs and inheritors? Jesus did three things in his three-year ministry. Jesus prayed at all times and prayed that the will of the Father be done. Jesus went about teaching and preaching, sharing the good news, bringing to people the reality of heaven. And Jesus went about healing. More than a third of the New Testament is about the healing miracles of Jesus. I want to say, 
Why aren't we doing that 2,000 years later? The provision for healing was established the day Jesus rose.